Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Friday, August 16, 2019, and I am back with results from seasoning two out of the three skillets that I bought with uh, traveling with Hubby through the Erie PA area a couple of weeks ago, and also my three-notch lodge that I found at a garage sale in June, which was, it, I've never found one like that in the wild before, and I've been looking for cast iron now for an ex, about two and a half years or so. But I want to give you guys the results of these, and for those of you that requested a seasoning video on the waffle maker, waffle iron, I'm going to do that because I want to add a fourth coat on this. Um, it, these are a little bit trickier to season, and if you don't do it up front, I mean, yeah, they'll season on the inside as you make waffles and so forth, but I want to do the whole thing, just one more coat to get it nice uh, locked in there. But let me go ahead and show you what I've got right now, and uh, we'll go from there. This is a three-notch lodge. It had one coat of seasoning prior to this. This is three more coats. had a couple of pieces of carbon that didn't want to come off. Sometimes you get these carbon warts that don't want to go away. Uh, I'm not sure if electrolysis would actually remove those or not, but I'm happy with the results. I may not even sell it because I've never found one in the wild before. It is actually marked, it's a lodge, number three, three notch, made in, in and around the 1920s to 1940s, probably maybe 30s to 40s, somewhere in there. So anyway, uh, that one will probably stay in my collection. And then I have the Volrath, unmarked Volrath, and you can actually tell because it has a vertical size number on the back of the skillet followed by a dash which is hallmarks of theirs an exterior heat ring and an intricate handle that actually goes right into the sidewall there it doesn't stop a lot of the wagners and even griswolds like here's a lodge even it stops and then some of the griswolds stop and uh, they have this uh, v thing upside down v thing that comes through there but this is definitely a volrath handle and then you have <clears throat> the interior so that is three coats of seasoning and this is a number eight and I'm very happy with the results on this one it's very smooth I didn't have to sand it it just it didn't have any underlying rust it was well cared for and was well worth the $35 that I paid for it even though I knew I was going to strip it down so uh, yeah I'll do that any day of the week if it's that good of a skill it's super super easy and then, of course, I found this favorite Pequaware waffle iron in Erie, PA, and it had uh, partially disintegrated wood handles that came with those, um, but it needed to be stripped and reseasoned. And there's only a few of these right now on eBay. One recently sold for $159.99 shipped, which is about $135 plus shipping. Um, that's how it stacks up without the handles. These are that rare. And you don't actually have to have handles to use it properly. You have enough here to grab onto as long as you have a uh, heat resistant glove like I have there. I've got several of those, bought them from Amazon to use, you know, when you're seasoning cast iron uh, or when you're working on, you know, like wood stoves outside, that kind of thing. So let me show you this one. This is three coats of seasoning. And it really was intricate to do. And I had a, a bunch of video clips up to show you how I seasoned all three of these pieces. But it would have taken far too long. You guys won't watch to the whole way through. <laughs> and, um, you know, you guys know how there's seasoning videos up on these. The one thing I want to tell you, though, um, on my most recent, recent seasoning techniques, uh, the first part hasn't changed. You... You put these skillets in, put your oven on to 200 degrees, let them gradually warm up. Once the oven temperature reaches 200 degrees, set the timer for 15 minutes, let them continue to heat. Once the timer goes off, take them out, put on your seasoning, take off your seasoning on, you know, the inside and out and all three pieces. And then you know, put it back in the oven, set your, uh, th your oven temperature for 300 degrees. And then when it reaches 300 degrees, 15 minutes again to heat them up even more. Pull them back out. Wipe off any excess seasoning that has pooled in an area you don't want it to go. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Those two steps have not changed. The third step has changed. Once you have them back in the oven, I put my oven temperature to 440 degrees. I set it for an hour and five minutes. 
It takes roughly five to six minutes to heat up to the 440 degrees, but you keep it in there for just an hour. When I originally seasoned skillets like this, I put my oven temperature about 420, then I put it down to 405 degrees, uh, and I left it in there for 90 minutes. So it's more effective actually to do 440 degrees for an hour. And then when your timer goes off, just leave your skillets in there to cool down. And then when, you, when they're cool enough to handle, that's probably after about 10 minutes, I pull them out and see if anything else needs to be wiped off that maybe, you know, misbehaved in the last seasoning cycle with my blue scot-free scotch uh, lint towels or, or uh, shot vac, not lint towels, shot vac towels. Um, but that's the main difference, the last step, 440 degrees for an hour and five minutes. And what it does, it dries it off really, really good. It's, it, it gets it beyond its smoke point, dries it off without harming the pieces, and it's nice and dry. And the, when you start cooking your food, you don't have that residue, that flaky stuff that comes off. So let me show you this piece here. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I had to soak one of the paddles again in lye to get the other handle out. It had to, I had to disintegrate it with the lye enough to break it off and then push it out with a screwdriver out of the handle opening here. Um, but this is what the top piece looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and, and turn those over. And this is what the other piece looks like little bit of pitting there but you know once uh, I get another coat of seasoning on there it'll become less obvious um, this piece is probably made in the 1920s or so and it has a bale handle many of these pieces do not have the bases this one is considered a low base it's perfect for uh, you know if you want to have low flames on your gas stovetop induction or glass or an electric coiled stovetop because it's low and it sits relatively close to the burner like that and so this is perfect for what I was looking for and what a lot of people out there might be looking for if you're looking to if you have this and you want to sell one I'm keeping this one at least for the time being so but anyway I'm going to set the camera down I'm going to pause it I'm going to show you how I intend to cook with it and we'll go from there I will be right back okay I'm back I'm going to use my heat resistant glove I think it goes up to 500 degrees and the bale handle probably won't get that hot. I mean, you'll be able to handle it. But what you would do, and let's see if you guys can see that. You can see the handles here. You just lift it up, grab onto your handles with your glove, and quickly lift it up and around like so to turn it when you make your waffles. Again, lift it up so you can get underneath there. You gotta grab them both, like so. I'll do it one more time because I don't like the bottom part that's pitted. <laughs> So there you go. That's all there is to it. Um, I don't really think I need handles for my purpose. And like I said, one sold for 159 shipped on eBay recently. Uh, that wasn't even as nice a condition as this one. So these are very rare. I'm going to be on the lookout for more of them, but they are challenging. And you guys want to see a, re -se a seasoning, how I actually season this. I do want to put a fourth coat on. So I'll show you exactly how I do it. I kind of put too much on, uh, too much seasoning on. It was hard to get it off, but I use a combination of tools. So I will show you that. If you want to see that, I'll go ahead and show you that on a video. Um, these guys are done. I can show you this at the same time I show the Wagner Ware because I'll probably be seasoning them at the same time. That's the number eight that's still soaking in vinegar, getting off the rust and the, and the, the excess rust. That sucker had so much rust on it, it's not funny. But anyways, I will show you that, and that's pretty much it. So if you like this type of video, please give me a thumb up. It'll bring this up and, and recommended videos for people to watch that want content like this. Uh, there's not a whole lot on waffle irons out there, so I would like to make, yeah, I would like to make another one that is recommended for people um, to watch. Leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching, guys, and go make it a great day.